Alright guys, in today's video I'm gonna make a video on rep ranges as part of my weighted calisthenics programming series. Now a lot of YouTubers are actually guilty of making very simplified versions of these type of videos and I've also done a few myself in the past but today I really want to make you guys understand rep ranges like why is it that a 5x5 is so popular for strength training, why are tens described so often for hypertrophy work, just kind of those kind of questions I want to answer in today's video so without further ado let's dive into it now to really understand rep ranges you have to take a look at two graphs one of them is essentially what percentage that you use for what rep range and the other one is how much volume that actually equates to we're going to start off with the first one which essentially is a graph displaying what percentage that you use for what rep range. Now the blue line here is the percentage that you would use for a max top set and the red line is the, is the percentage that you use if you want to do straight sets. Now first and foremost, before really talking about this one, this does not mean that every single triple has to be done at 90%. This means if you're gonna do a max top set, you're gonna be doing a triple at 90%. So it's not the case that every single time that you do a top set of three reps, you're always going to plan out 90%. What you do see is let's say a triple at 80%, which then increases to 90% across a training block. And that is how you keep your intensity fluctuating over time, like I've explained in previous videos. And now let's actually talk about the graph itself. So a few things that you can notice immediately. First of all, obviously the percentage of your top is going to be higher than if you were to do straight sets. And that's pretty obvious once again, because you have to account for accumulated fatigue. And as the reps increase, intensity decreases, which once again is pretty obvious. Now something that is very very important that you notice from this graph is that once you go from your singles to triples to sets of five, you really don't lose that much intensity. As you go beyond fives, you really have to drop intensity a lot more to account for accumulated fatigue. And the difference between your max top set and doing straight sets becomes a lot greater. Now the second graph displays the amount of volume that actually equates to if you're doing your straight sets. I am assuming a one rep max of about 100 kilograms to make those calculations a lot easier. And I'm going to be doing a 3x1, 3x3, 5x5, 5x8 and a 5x10 and a 3x20 in these calculations giving you the volumes on screen. The reasons why the number of sets actually isn't the same is that because these are the most commonly prescribed reps and sets. So three, so three singles, three triples, five by five, obviously described a lot, five by eight, five by 10. And then obviously you're not going to do five by 20. So, I'm so I also took a three by 20 in that example. Now, a couple of things that you notice right away when looking at this graph is that volume actually increases going from singles, triples, fives, eights and tens and then decreases afterwards. Also notice the massive difference in volume between triples and sets of five. Now in order to really make you guys understand rep ranges, you actually have to take a look at both of those graphs side by side. And if we do so, a couple of things that we kind of already know from my previous videos start to explain themselves. So essentially the singles, triples, those are your strength rep ranges. Volume is a lot lower, but intensity is a lot higher to really get your neurological adaptations that you get from your strength training. But like I've also explained, in my previous video it's much much harder to actually accumulate training volume like you can once again see in this graph on screen if we then go to our sets of 8 and sets of 10 volume is a lot higher in these ranges but the intensity has to drop a lot to account for accumulated fatigue this is why these ranges are prescribed for hypertrophy work and they are a little bit less strength specific because you're not working at those higher intensities but in return you get a lot more volume we can also clearly see why a 5x5 is recommended so much for strength training because the uh, relation between volume and intensity is really really optimal at the 5x5 mark. 
you only lose about 5% compared to your 3x3, but in return, you get a lot more volume. So essentially, you can do relatively high weight for relatively high volume when you do your 5x5, which once again explains why 5x5 is prescribed so much for strength training. We can also explain why sets of 10 are prescribed so much for hypertrophy work because if you take a look at the second graph, volume actually peaks whenever you're doing your sets of 10. Doing more volume is obviously going to elicit more of a hypertrophy training stimulus. That's why 5x10 or generally sets of 10 is prescribed so much for hypertrophy training. And now to finish off today's video, I really want to answer the question, where should you be training? Now, this obviously depends greatly on the goal. So if you want to get stronger, you'll spend the vast majority of your training life doing singles, triples and sets of five. If the goal is hypertrophy, you'll spend a lot more time around the eights, the tens and the twelves. And if you're just starting out with your strength work, doing sets of five is a very good place to start. Now, something that I have learned over the last year is that once you get a little bit more advanced in terms of your training and the goal is strength, you actually have to do your work across all rep ranges. So if you want to get stronger long term, you also have to improve your 10s, 8s, uh, your 12s. You also have to spend a lot of time doing volume work and preparing yourself for more strength specific work down the line. And also, by the way, if your goal is just getting bigger, so hypertrophy training, don't be afraid of throwing in some strength work, especially with key big compound movements. Aside from just training enjoyment and keeping things interesting, those uh, training blocks focused on strength will actually help you to keep progressing in the hypertrophy rep ranges. And with that being said, that is essentially all I want to cover in today's video. As always, if you guys have any more questions, leave them down below and video suggestions are always very well appreciated. Um, and as always, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already and share the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Laters.